That is why I said to you that gifts are mentored, but a character is fathered. When you are fathering, you are fathering a character. You are fathering relationships. The devil is not inter interested in how many gifts you have in this place. He is interested in assassinating your character. That is why in the body of Christ today, our characters are assassinated every day. That is why we are failing in relationships more than people of any other religions. It's not that they are better in relationships, but we do not have the revelation of the I and the Father are one principle. Because we cannot relate in the same psychiatric advice and psychological advice that the world has. We have a particular way of relationship. It is called I and, and the Father are one. Now we know that we come from a, a, a difficult time. And even now, some of us have not yet recovered from that time. But I want you to know that there was nothing wrong with anybody, but the devil was doing his usual business, which is to attack relationships. You will see that after these attacks, you will have this church split. You will have that church split. Every time you work very hard, and after a lot of work that you have done, you only do it so that you can split again. And you work for a long time. And after that long work, a lot of prayers, a lot of guest speakers, a lot of this, a lot of that. After that, it's only going to introduce another split. For how long are we going to work that way? And the devil does not attack your tongues. He does not attack your healing. He does not attack your gift. He simply attacks your love. He attacks the place where you are not aware that this is the place where I lack. That is the place that he is going to attack. Now, I want to give you practical solutions as a church. I want to give you practical solutions as a son when you have problems with your father. I want to give you practical solutions as a father when you have problems with your son. And I also want to give you practical solutions as a church when you have problems with relating to another church. I have spoken to you yesterday the responsibility that you have as the father of this gate, of the 12th gate of East London. How you must relate with the other fathers of East London. But that Magoma, you still have a responsibility of relating with other churches that are outside East London. And some of them, you, you have just received an attack and you don't know how to relate with them in future. Say Amen. Now, you are anointed by God to relate with them in the way that God is going to design a relationship with those churches. You are asking God, oh God, what is my future with this church? If you understand science, God will say, if the covalent bond is not working, do the ionic bond. If this bond is not working, do this bond. There will always be a bond that God is going to bring in his wisdom, how you will bond with any other relationship. There is never a relationship before God that is complicated. God is going to give a solution on how he wanted that relationship to be any, uh, even from the beginning. Now, the enemy is always making us to be stuck in how to relate. He is attacking us in the very area which is our inheritance. God is going to make you through the experience that we have gone through 
to assist other churches in how to relate. He is going to make you to open new books of relating. You will access your offices and he will make you to teach about how to relate because you will understand the atoms, the molecules, you will understand the particles that must be there for a relationship to happen. You will know that this relationship must form water. This same relationship of the same atoms must form ice. The same relationship of the same atoms can form vapor. Some of the relationships, they are going to be, you will be able to, to hold them. Some of them, they are going to be fluid relationships. But some of them, they are going to be invisible relationships. I give you that parable. And I believe that through that parable, the Lord is going to give you an interpretation. This is the challenge that you will have even outside. Our challenge is how do we need to relate. Now, how do you relate with your sons? I have learned from my father, like I said, that we are a family of 80 sons around the world. My father relates with his sons, all of them, as though he's one son. There is no son that looks as if he is better than the other son. There is a temptation in the flesh to say this son is better than the other. There is that feeling in you that I want to reward this son because what he is doing is better than the, the, the other son. But the principle that you must stick to, you must stick to the one son principle. Everyone must know here that all of them, they are not I the son, but they are we the son you see jesus christ came here on earth as i the son but when he came back to the father after he was crucified he came back to the father as we the son now this now is shifting from you to the responsibilities of the son if you look in the life of jesus christ when he made sacrifice he made it alone he did not make it with you. When he was crucified, he was crucified alone. He was not crucified with you. And he did not go to complain there that, you know, when I was crucified, these others were having a nice time. There are these sons that when they have sacrificed, they will come to the father to say, you know, I was the only one who was going door to door. So and so was not going door to door. They will come to you to say, you know, so and so, when I am sweeping here, he is not doing anything. They will come to report everything to you. You know, I do this sacrifice. I do this sacrifice. And after I do this sacrifice, these, they only appear when everything is nice. But Jesus Christ did not come and say, I sacrificed alone. I was hanging alone. They were laughing at me. They were spitting at me. But now that I'm crowned, they want to be crowned together with me. He knew the principle of the economy of the kingdom. And that principle is the principle that you move from I the son to we the son. When you are making sacrifices, be happy to sacrifice alone. But when you come to the time of crowning, be happy when all others, even if they didn't do the work, to be crowned together with you. Do not come to complain that you did this work alone and now come the time of crowning, everybody comes. It is the principle of the kingdom. You must have the eye, the son, will be sacrificed. But we, the sons, will be crowned. It is a principle of working together. And this principle is a principle, what is sustaining the principle it is not what that other son is doing, but it is the I and the Father are. It is the oneness between you and the Father. You see, Jesus Christ, when he had to sacrifice, he did not ask many people to help him to sacrifice. When prayer was needed in heaven, Jesus Christ knew that 
He is the one who must pray. Whatever work must be done, it must be like you are the only son of a mother. When it is time for offering, you must take it like there is no one else who will offer. You are the only one who will offer. When it is time for tithe, you must take it out like there is no other tithe. It's only your tithe. When it is time to pray, you must pray for this church as though that Makoma is depending on you alone and there is no other. When it is time to clean the church, you must clean the church like there is no other person but it is you alone. When it is time to prepare the church, you must prepare them like there is no one else but it is you alone. When it comes to sacrifice, do not call people to sacrifice with you. Do the sacrifice alone because what is sustaining the relationship here is you and the Father. You are cleaning here looking at the Father. And as you are looking at the Father, you are not looking at the Father that He must shower praises to you. You are looking at the Father 